Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing good. I hope that you had a great week. Um, for me, this week was a little hectic just because I changed my work schedule and now I work, um, I work the same hours but I just work in, in uh, less days. So it was just a little hectic just getting used to it but I made it through and I actually managed to uh, find the time to start reading again, which I'm very excited, not done with the book, not done and I don't plan on being done Anytime soon, I'm giving myself until the end of the semester to finish the shit reading. But let's see, because finals are coming up, so we'll see how that goes. But overall, it was a great week, and I'm very happy that it's almost over and we're getting ready for the weekend. So for this project, I decided to analyze Meredith Monk. So she's an American composer, dancer, and choreographer. She was born in New York in 1942, and she attended Sora Lawrence College, uh, where she studied theater, dance, and music. Um, one of her most important pieces, uh, it's called 16 millimeter earring, which was composed in, composed in 1966. Um, and basically she just filmed herself dancing and she made her own music and soundtrack. And the soundtrack was very interesting because she did this by running three uh, tape loops simultaneously. And that was the whole experimental I, I want to hear it. I do. I'm very intrigued to hear this piece um, just because like if it's like one of her most iconic and like known for pieces and important especially I feel like sometimes something may not be as popular but it's important because it signifies like a change or like a major stepping stone to what like they became after. So I feel like that's what this piece is. She then moved into theater uh, with with her first composition being Juice in 1969. And what she did with this one was very interesting because she tried to overturn or change um, concert conventions for three nights. So basically for a period of over five to six week, weeks, she had the three nights, the three concerts. It was only three shows, but every single show, the venue got smaller. So you can already imagine how the first one and the third one, even though they're the same music, they might be very different just because of like the atmosphere and like everything the echo might change the whole sound which um it just got me thinking i was like you can literally like f go to the three of them like would you be able to notice the different thing you know like would you just be like well it's because like one note cannot be played the same or something like that you know or like oh they're just off key i don't know I i'm just wondering like how much of a difference that made but it just goes to show how like she's messing with space and like how creative she is with like how she performs. In the 1970s, she began to focus on her solo work. So she would either just sing in her songs using her voice or another, she would combine her voice with piano, which this kind of led her to find her own um, characteristic and trademark, which is her leaf or lethe. I'm sorry if I'm saying that word wrong. Uh, effects, which is just basically a repertory of vocal techniques. And some of the techniques and some of like the characteristics include glottal stops and Mary Indian style vibrato, nasal singing, nonsense syllables, and childlike vocal tones. Um, and repetition and ostinato are also very central to her compositions. So I know it sounds like a lot of works and uh, just like techniques, right? And when I, when I was reading, I was just like a bit confused as to how like she was going to incorporate like many styles but once I saw her performance it became very clear even though like I'm not very familiar with all of them I just think it was very interesting how I was able to figure it out and um, it was just very interesting overall so um, she also plays with space as we saw before on her her theater work just like making it smaller right um, and one thing that I really like about her and I found very interesting was the fact that she composes a piece with the performers in mind. So what I mean by that, let's say if you're a dancer and your strength in dance is ballet or you're really like your strong instrument is the violin. She would compose that song based on that. Like she will make sure that you had the right notes, so you had the everything, the right pitch for you to be able to shine. So I think that's really interesting because, I don't know, I don't think I've ever heard of that before, to be completely honest. And I just think it's really nice. Um, and I think it helps the final piece just because, um, 
perhaps everyone's like on their strength and everyone knows what they're doing and everyone's comfortable. Not that you're not experimenting, but it just makes you be on your zone and everyone's like in what they know what to do. So I just thought that was very, very unique and interesting. In other pieces that I um, just wanted to share, it's in Lullaby number four, and this is from Songs from the Hill, and this was composed in 1976. Um, she uses the meow sound for the entire piece. Um, super unique, like I don't think I would have imagined to make a song out of just like meow sounds, so I really think Again, that speaks to her experimentation and stuff like that. A lot of people would consider her work as minimalism, but she doesn't. And she states that she emotionally feels like minimalism is abs absent in the geometric patterns of her early works. So basically, like, even though, like, yeah, you can kind of fit into it, maybe the geometric, or it's not, it's just kind of like a maybe her work can be seen as an interpretation of minimalism but not entirely minimalism or her own spin to it you know and i i may understand why some other people may see it but maybe her definition of another genre is what she her work is and people just like associated with minimalism you know so i just thought that was very interesting how other people see kind of like the same thing and she was able to see like she has her own vision uh, with her music, which I think is very interesting. So moving on to the piece um, that I analyzed. So I analyzed Songs of Ascension, and this was performed in October of 2008 and at ha Anne Hamilton's Tower. So right off the bat, it was performed at a tower. And this is a shallow tower, and it has a spiral staircase, and there's performers. We're in white, we're in red, we're in black, going up the stairs in the same pattern. Some of them kind of break um, into it. Some are coming in. Uh, one of the most interesting parts, in my opinion, was at the very bottom of the tower, it was filled with water, but the water was black. So that made it like a, like a lot more interesting. And throughout the whole piece, like, you notice that, um, as I mentioned before, she went to school to study uh, theater, dance, and music. They're all introduced in there. There's not, there's choreography, even though it's not like what you would expect. Um, there's dance movements and obviously the music. Um, but it's, the way it was done, it's not a piece where, like, the dance feels like it's just... Um, it does complement it, but it, it doesn't feel like it was an afterthought. It feels like it was made with the music in mind. Like, I feel like everything, like, I feel like she was making the music, does dance, everything. Um, and I feel like that's what makes her work very unique. I don't think it's done at different stages. I really don't quote me on that. I really, I'm not sure. But that's kind of like what came to mind. I feel like she works on them simultaneously. And the black water. Yes, the black water again is very interesting and something that I found. Um, I don't know if it like that out actually like helps, or what the main reason other than like visual interest it was there for. But perhaps it helps with like the echo or just to create like more of like that mystical sense. And the interesting part of this performance is that the sound travels up. Right, it has like little windows. But like it's very interesting how like you can be moving up and the sound is gonna sound different because it's like reaching the top of the tower which is open. So that takes a big role in her music, especially in this in this piece. Um, and of course, uh, there are traditional instruments. So we do see like the violin and many other uh, string instruments. Um, and I wasn't able to recognize like a general beat it just feels like like the song overall feels slow um and it does change the time like it like it just fluctuates but like you can kind of feel it like speed up but overall it's like very like linear it doesn't like it's just very slow um and the whole piece feels very emotional 
it feels spiritual and just like mystical like you don't really understand what's happening to or at least i don't i feel like it's very abstract and i feel like that's what truly embodies i was able to recognize a lot of the techniques that she mentioned that i mentioned on the research which i thought was very interesting like the vibrato and the like the nonsense noises like i was all able to um to figure out which i really loved so this piece I truly recommend watching it's a 10 minute video but it just keeps you intrigued because like there's like everyone like there's places in the tower where like there's like 10 people lined up like next to each other like shoulder to shoulder and then there's other ones where they're like going up the stairs and there's other parts of the tower where they're fully separated right and you I can you kind of get lost in the tower and I think that's really interesting and the cool thing is that there's like she's moving across um there's like this main character i'm gonna wear if she um if it's her uh, meredith monk but you do see one where it feels kind of like the main um performer in a sense and she moves up and down and i don't know it, it's just driving the piece it's very very interesting i truly recommend it and i really do want to get more into her work just because it's more visual it's not just listening um and one of the cool things was that you can hear sentiment of like sand and sadness with the strong vibrato she has a very specific which i believe is the american Ameri indian style vibrato very unique it's very beautiful but it's so emotional which i found kind of like odd and I gotta admit that like at the end <laughs> there's like this part where she's like speaking like nonsense not that she's speaking but she's kind of like singing and it's it's like so full of emotion that you kind of understand what she's like trying to tell you which I found like very odd I was just like what like I wouldn't be able to tell you like oh she was crying because of this 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 happened but you can tell that she was sad or like it was a, like a feeling of sadness frustration so it was very interesting how I was able to like get that uh, from just listening to nonsense which I'm sure it makes sense and it was like the not the thing that sounds like nonsense is very planned but I don't know it was just very odd I had never experienced that before so with that I'll finish with my thoughts which I think her music is very visual and is the performance beyond sound you can I feel like her music and all her compositions are better seen visually um, I haven't listened to all of them but I feel like after that piece, I really feel strongly that that's kind of like all her music is very visual. Um, it's just very abstract and it kept me interested. Like I was just trying to figure out what was happening and what the piece was about. I have no idea what it is about and everyone can make their own interpretation. But I just thought it was very interesting in that sense. And um, what I enjoyed the most about this piece is how it's not played at a traditional stage. I know it was like infinite stairs and like it just got me thinking like how much would this piece change if it was a windy day or it was rainy you know there's like a lot of things that um just like could change this whole performance so i just thought that was very interesting like having a controlled performance while also being in a setting where you cannot control every single thing uh, which i feel like in a stage you can have more of a controlled performance but on this one it's a little bit more um i don't know just a little bit out of your control which i guess it's just more experimental so with that i'll just want to say that i really recommend again to go watch that video and um, i hope that you enjoyed this video um and yes um stay safe um i hope that um, next week and this weekend is great for you all and yeah i'll see you guys next week with another video bye